Mazda debuted the CX-50 last year to give you a more off-road option when it came to a small crossover. But if you are looking for a more sporty option, this is what you want, the CX-5. This is the carbon turbo edition, which means it has that turbo engine. And we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. I just wanted to point out when you go to the carbon, you get this zircon sand paint and it is really beautiful it actually looks a little more green than it does you know the sand brown color but um i think it looks great uh, there's i've had a lot of compliments this week so check it out you might end up loving it but let's go take a look at your powertrain option in this and how fast you can get where you're wanting to go this CX-5 Carbon Turbo Edition comes with a 2.5 liter turbo inline four cylinder with 265 horsepower, 320 foot pounds of torque. You get six speed automatic transmission, goes zero to 60 in about six and a half seconds. And for fuel economy, you're gonna be looking at 22 in the city, 27 in the highway and 24 for an average. You may be asking, what is the Carbon Edition? Well, the Carbon Edition is not carbon fiber. Doesn't mean that there's carbon fiber anywhere on here, but there is a little bit on the dash, if that's what you want to call it. But what it is, is just an additional trim level. So if you get the base 2.5 liter, it is about the third level of trim in there, and you just get a few special things which I'm gonna tell you about here in just a second. But if you go to the turbo, this is actually the entry level of the turbo engines. So the 2.5 liter turbo carbon is your entry level on the turbo. And this is what comes with the carbon edition. It's beautiful terracotta and black interior, eight way powered driver seat, and a six way powered passenger seat, a moonroof, auto dimming mirror, universal garage door opener. You get a powered lift gate and you get this awesome 10 speaker Bose system. This CX-5 also comes with plenty of standard equipment, including emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning with lane keep assist, adaptive cruise and all wheel drive. All right, let's take a look at the space in this cargo area. It's a decent amount of space. You're looking at about 30.8 cubic feet back here. Good amount of space. You do have a little bit of, wow, you actually have a spare tire in here. Plus, way to go Mazda. You don't see very many that have actual spare tires in here. All right, then we're gonna drop this second row down and that is going to give you that is a lot of room back here. I think it's actually a little bit more room than the CX-50. All right, now I think it's time to get inside because it is extremely cold out here. It is negative seven, I believe, earlier with a wind chill of about negative 20. So go down and hit the subscribe button and hit the like button because I'm out here freezing my butt off to bring this car to you. And that helps me get more cars to bring to you, hopefully during the summertime. Okay, so let's take a look at this interior. This is the terracotta and black. So you do have a door cubby down there. You've got some terracotta stitching on the door here all your window and mirror controls right here. Nice little satin door handle. And here is your little bit of carbon, if that's what you wanna call it. It is plastic, but it does look a little bit like carbon. This is your eight-way powered seat that you get on the carbon trim, and you do have memory seating right there. Here is a quick little overview of what it looks like in there. We'll get in and take a closer look. It is absolutely freezing today. Just a quick look right now at this dash. You can see right down here, one degree is what it says. <laughs> Actually, I think it might be less than that. And the tire pressure <laughs> warning has been on all day um, just because I checked the pressure, the tires are fine. I think it's just a faulty sensor or the, it's just so cold, it just can't register anything. 
there's the passenger door. Same thing, you know, a little bit of carbon fiber trim there. You come around to the dash. I do like how simple this dash is. It is, I just really like it. I think it's really nice. Mazda has done a great job in upscaling their vehicles. This is all soft touch uh, plastic and leather, and you do have all that stitching going across there also. Although it doesn't have the terracotta stitching, which I would like to see the terracotta stitching up here also. Here is that other piece of what looks kind of like carbon fiber, but it's not actually, it's not bad. Um, it's not something that's like, oh wow, that looks really bad. It actually looks pretty nice in here. And I really do like these vents. Um, this is my cell phone holder that I use. It's universal, it works in just about every car. I so here are your vents and your hazard. And then here is your, I believe it's like a 10 and a half inch screen. Um, it's really nice. This is one strange thing. We still have not figured out why Mazda does this, but this is what they do. This is actually a touchscreen when you use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So we can reach up here and we can just touch, go straight to the maps. I can touch it, Pandora, and then you make calls or whatever else. You can actually change the layout. Pretty nice. Works really well or you can use the dial down here. If we press this home button here, that is going to bring us to this screen, which is still Android Auto. If I select Mazda, it's gonna kick it back to Mazda's screen. Now, this is not touchscreen while you're on this Mazda screen. You have to use the dial to select what you want to select. So if you click to go to entertainment, this is what you get, you can, and there's nothing there. Press the back button. So if we go down and we click on the navigation, this is gonna give you your navigation if you have that activated. And then you've got your different settings and things like that. Um, if you go back where we were, you'll notice that over here it has Android Auto or it has Apple CarPlay. I am connected, so it's lit up, so I'm connected, and then I just have to push up on the rotary knob, and it takes me right to my Android Auto, so that's pretty nice. You have all of your climate control buttons across here, which is really nice. You do have heated and ventilated seats in the front row. So then we move back, and you do have a kind of a cubby hole here, but this is your wireless phone charger right there. You do also have a 12 volt plug right there. You got your standard shifter, which is really nice. Same shifter the Mazda's been using for years, decades maybe. And it just goes down and then when you're in drive, you do have that option to go to manual and you can upshift, downshift on your own. You have your MI drive button here and we'll flip through those right now. This is your off-road. It's orange and normal and sport turns it red. And those are, your two, those are your only three options. This is your rotary knob, of course this controls, this is your home button, and then you've got your music and navigation, favorites, and then your back button. Um, and then you have the electronic parking brake, your auto hold, and here's your volume button. I, I really like the volume button being right here. It's just really easy to use when you're driving down the road, you don't have to be reaching for anything, it's just right here. Come back a little bit farther, you got two cup holders. This center console right here, I uh, open it up. Not very big, got a little tray here, and take that out. Got a few things down in here, but you can see this is a glasses case, and it's just about the depth of a glass case. And then you look here, and you do have two USB-Cs, where in the back you had USB-As, and you flip this up and looky here we got another 12 volt plug so your digital cluster which we looked at just a shortly for a few minutes ago doesn't really contain a whole lot of information on the left side of the steering wheel you have your info button you can press that and that's going to change in here but you just have trip a trip b you have your driver assistance and then your service button is your compass and then you can just shut it off and have nothing there. 
So there's really your options there. There's not a whole lot. To... So the steering wheel is pretty much the same as it always has been. So you have your cruise control. You can set it, resume, and then you can increase or decrease. And then you have your adaptive cruise setting right there. Your mode button just switches you between regular cruise or adaptive cruise. And then on the left side, you just have your info button, which we just went through on the screen. In there, you change your tracks for your stereo. You got your volume and then your call buttons. It's pretty simple. The other thing I always like about Mazda is if you look through here, you can read what is on the stocks for your turn signals and your wipers and stuff, so, and your headlights. It's just easy to see. They did a really good job with placement on there. And then up here, Mazda, just like Ford, gives you a sunglass holder, uh, which is great. I love that it has that. That's one thing my wife always looks for. And then, of course, you do have the open moonroof that comes with this Carbon Edition. Well, that's it for the front, which it's pretty basic, it's pretty simple, but it's also really, really nice. This really feels more upscale. And guess what? I just forgot to tell you about something. It's got a heads-up display. So this one comes with a heads-up display, which, see if I can get you there. You can kind of see it right now. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, it's hard to see it in the snow, but it is right there. And it does great. It's pretty simple, but it does have your driver assistance and your speed and what your cruise is set at. So uh, it's great information. Okay, now we got covered that. Let's go get in the back and see how well a six foot adult fits back there. Okay, so I want to show you guys something that's pretty awesome. Watch how far this door opens. But that is a 90 degree angle. That is awesome. So let's get back in here and the seat is in my driving position. So I am just slightly touching here. There is this cut out here so I can put my knees in here a little bit farther. Not exactly that comfortable, but inside this cutout, I do feel like I have plenty of room. Now, the per driver may have to go up just a little bit, but I'm not horrible. I'm just really just barely touching. I'm not intruding into their space. Head space, I actually have three fingers, so about two inches, somewhere in that range. So good amount of space back here. And let's see, do these recline? If I pull this handle, that would drop it. Nope, does not recline, but they are at a good angle, so it is pretty comfortable back here. So why don't you come on in here and we'll take a look at what's going on back here. In the back here, you can see there is the passenger side door, which has some nice terracotta stitching there to match the terracotta seats here in the rear. They are pretty comfortable. Um, this is can sit three people, but it's gonna be a little tight here in this center section. It might be a little tight here in this center section, um, but you probably could put a small child in here. The rest of the seats all look great. Uh, down here we have two vents and that's all you've got there. Now where the cool stuff happens is inside this center armrest. So we're gonna pull this armrest down and you have two cup holders. It looks like what you have here is a cell phone holder. And then you flip this up and in here is two USB plugs, which is a pretty nice spot. And then you can just maybe set your cell phone or something else down inside here. But that's where you got a little hidden compartment in there. That's pretty cool. That's really it for back here. Um, you can see my headroom now, I guess, that you can see that I do have a decent amount of headroom. Like I said, it's about three fingers high or something like that. So um, that's pretty good. And then here's a better look at my knees again. And you can see when I'm sitting here, I am touching the backs, but I'm not really pushing into them like that. So they're just touching and I can put my legs in here, which is a little bit awkward, but there is more space there. If I stretch my feet underneath the seat down here, then that frees me up just a little bit more. That's it. I mean, it is a little tight for a full-size adult, but um, if you're a small adult, you'll fit back here fine. If you're a child, 
you'll fit back here fine. If you have children, won't be a problem. And with the way those doors open up, it's gonna make it really easy to put car seat, get children in their car seats. So that is a huge plus. So let's go talk about some pricing and then let's take this out for a drive. The base non-turbo CX-5 2.5 liter S Select starts at $29,300. Now on that base engine, you also get the preferred, the carbon, a premium and premium plus trims. Now, if you step up to the turbo, you get this base carbon turbo, which starts at 37,000. And as tested here, we are looking at about $39,410 after options and destination charge. And there's two trim levels above this one, the turbo premium and turbo signature, if you're looking at something that's just a little bit more. So I've been driving this Mazda CX-5 uh, for a few days now, and it is really fun to drive. With it being all-wheel drive, and of course this one with having the turbo added on to that 2.5 liter really makes it a lot of fun, especially as you can see all of this wonderful, beautiful snow that we just got, and it being under zero degrees. So we actually hit negative seven last night. Anyway, having a lot of fun driving this car. It drives just like any other Mazda drives. It has a sportier suspension. It can handle throwing it into the corners and stuff like that. And the difference with the CX-5 and the CX-50, the CX-50 has a little bit longer wheelbase. The CX-5 is a little bit tighter wheelbase. Therefore, it can handle a lot more whipping around and sporty driving. Zero to 60 in six and a half seconds really is decent for this car um, and for this mid-size crossover segment. Um, but let's get pulled out here and let's run a zero to 60 just because I want you guys to hear how phenomenal this engine sounds. All right, hopefully we are able to get a decent amount of traction because, uh, like I said, it has been snowing, but we look like we're pretty clear right here, so a little brake torque. One, two, three. There's 60. That's that is pretty good. It's pretty impressive. I really like that. And this, just the sound, Mazda made the sound of this engine just good. Yeah, no, I'm not trying to say it sounds as good as a V8. That's not, not what I'm saying. It is a four cylinder, but it is an inline four cylinder. And they really tuned this really well and just made it sound good. Um, so I am really impressed by that. I really do like that. Uh, now, a couple things. Um, you know, we covered suspension's great. The seats are actually really, really comfortable. Um, I've been having a little bit of an issue in a couple of the different Mazdas where the seats felt short or flat, like I didn't have enough support, but these seats in this one actually feel really, really good. Uh, so I don't know if they've changed things forward or these are just better seats, but they're really, really nice, been, been very comfortable. The two hour drive that I took for our mile per gallon test, I was very comfortable. I didn't have any issues with it. So seat comfort is really good. And of course, just like Mazda always does, they lay out all of this stuff really simple and easy to use. So um, I love the way that this looks. It's There's not a whole bunch of stuff that I don't need and there's just the stuff that I do need. So I really do like that. The only thing is the rear seat um, space, which you saw earlier that I was a little tight back there. Not horrible, but a little bit tight. Now, if you think that you need a little bit more room than that, you can go to the CX-50. It does have a little bit more leg room. If you go down to the CX-30, you're gonna lose quite a bit of leg room, so I wouldn't go that route. But for this car, this carbon turbo starting out at $37,000, 
that's, that's pretty good. I really do think that's pretty good. Now you can get the base model, uh, like we just heard earlier, the base model starts out at under 30,000. So if that's what you wanna do, that's fine. And you're gonna get a little bit better gas mileage there. You're gonna lack the uh, power and the, um, the funness, <laughs> if that's a word, the funness of this car. If you are looking at mid-size crossovers, Mazda, Mazda is where you wanna go. You're going to get a luxurious looking interior. You're going to get a good solid engine and you're gonna get a car or a SUV or a crossover that is sporty, has a sporty touch to it, has a sporty feel to it, and has some funness included. Thanks for joining me. Click on one of these videos right up here. I'm sure that you're going to enjoy them. And don't forget to click subscribe and I will see you in the next one.